Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to learn about real numbers which is chapter 1 of CBSE grade 10. So first let us understand what are real numbers. Now real numbers are divided into two parts and those are the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Now let us understand which numbers fall under the rational numbers. So the first one let us begin with the fractions which are of the form p by q. For example, the numbers of the form 2 over 3 or 13 over 6 or 5 over 4 or even you can write it as 5 whole numbers because 5 can be written as 5 over 1 and for example if it is 1000 then even 1000 can be written as 1000 over 1. So these also can be represented as fractions. So all these kind of numbers fall under the rational numbers. Now the next type of number which falls under rational number is whole numbers. Whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. They count to infinite numbers. It can be 1 million, 1 billion, 1000 billions and so on. But they have to be whole numbers not fractions of this format p by q. And whole numbers always start with 0 and they are always positive numbers. Now the next category which falls under rational number is natural numbers. Natural numbers are same as whole numbers but the difference is they start with 1 not with 0. So 1, 2, 3 till infinite numbers. So even natural numbers fall under rational numbers. Now the fourth category which falls under rational numbers is integers. Now integers can be any positive or negative number inclusive of the zero. For example if it is negative 15 or it's going to be 1000 or zero and so on fall under integers. Remember decimal numbers like 1.5, negative 5.2, and so on do not fall under the integers category. Integers have to be whole numbers either they are positive or negative. Now the next category which falls under rational numbers is decimals. The examples of decimals are these ones which have decimal points. For example if it is 16.1 or if it is 111.23 or if it is going to be 565 point four five six so you can see there are three decimal places over here here there are two decimal places and here after the decimal point there is one decimal place so these kind of numbers fall under the decimals now the decimals are divided into two types that is terminating decimals or one is non-terminating repeating decimals or non-terminating recurring decimals now terminating decimals are of the form 16.1. Now another example can be 18.4624. Now this is also terminating because the number stops after 4 decimal places. It doesn't continue after the decimal point. So these are called as terminating decimals. And non-terminating repeating or recurring decimals are of the form 17.1. 1 1 1 1 it continues or it can be written as 1024 point it repeats for example it is 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 and so on so there are various ways of writing these repeating or recurring decimal numbers for example 17.1111 could be written as 17.1 and they usually put a bar above the 1 the repeating number or it can be written as 17.1 and above the one they put a dot. So the meaning is the one keeps on repeating forever. Now 1024.121212 can be written as 1024.12. Now 12 is repeating if you see 12121212. So usually they put a bar above 12 or they put it as 1024.12 and these two are repeating so they put a point above 1 and a point above 2. So the meaning of these two stays the same saying that 12 is repeating 
again and again so these two categories fall under the decimals and these decimals will fall under the rational numbers that is non terminating you can see they are not terminating or they are not stopping after the decimal place and they are repeating themselves forever so these fall under the non terminating repeating decimals for rational numbers now let us look at what are the irrational numbers now under the irrational numbers the first category is the radicals or sorts now these are of the form square roots or they can be cube roots or they can be fourth roots or it can be nth root for example if i write something as square root of 2 then this comes under the irrational numbers if for example i write cube root of 14 then this comes under irrational numbers so we can in general write it as nth root of any number m falls under irrational numbers be careful for some questions like square root of 4 now square root of 4 4 is a perfect square number so you can write it as 2 or 2 over 1 which belongs to fractions as well as whole numbers which falls under the rational numbers category so these doesn't fall under the irrational numbers so these kind of questions come under rational numbers but in case if they had given you square root of 8 8 is not a perfect square number so this falls under the irrational numbers category so this becomes an irrational number and this becomes a rational number now let us look at the next category which falls under the irrational numbers so we have decimals again which were also there in the rational numbers but there is a small change for the decimal irrational numbers the category which falls under this is non terminating non recurring or non repeating for example if i write a number over here 2.313233334356 and it continues as you can see it is non terminating that is it doesn't stops after some digits and it is non recurring neither of the number is repeated here we have 31 32 33 34 35 36 there is no pattern that is in the previous case for non terminating repeating we saw that it was like 17.121212 1 2 this 1 2 was repeating itself and there was a pattern 1 2 was repeating after two decimal places but here there is no repetition either in one decimal place or two decimal places now another category could be for example 17 point if i write it as 41568970521 and so on you can still see here there are no repeating patterns observed so these are non terminating they do not terminate as well as they are non recurring they are not repeating themselves so these also fall under the irrational numbers category so these were just few examples i mentioned for the rational numbers and irrational numbers now let us move on to the next part of this topic that is fundamental theorem of arithmetic The fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. Now let us understand this statement by using some examples. Now first of all we need to understand what are composite numbers and what are prime numbers. So prime numbers are the ones which are divisible by 1 and themselves for example if i write 2 3 5 7 11 and so on these numbers are divisible just by 1 that is 2 over 1 3 over 1 5 over 1 and so on and they can be divided by themselves that is 2 over 2 3 over 3 5 over 5 and so on no other numbers can divide these numbers so they are called as prime numbers the ones which are divisible by 1 or themselves and the composite numbers are the ones which can be divided by 1 and themselves and other numbers as well for example if i take 4 6 8 9 
9, 10. Now here 4 has many factors that is it can be divided by 1, it can be divided by 2 and it can be divided by itself. Whereas 6 is having factors as 1, 2, it is divisible by 2, then it has 3, then it is divisible by itself. So you can see along with 1 and itself it has other factors as well. So these are called as composite numbers. So once now it is clear what is prime and composite numbers, let us understand what the statement says. Every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. So let me take an example over here. So I have this 10 which is a composite number which can be expressed as product of prime numbers. That is 10 I can write it as 2 times 5. 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. And the product of these two prime numbers gives me the composite number 10. That is all. This is what every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes means. And this factorization is unique because let me take another composite number which is 15. Now 15 is a composite number which can be written as a product of prime number 3 times 5. As you can see here it is 2 times 5 and here it is 3 times 5. So both are distinct or both are unique for the composite number 10 and for the composite number 15. They both cannot be same. And the order in which the prime numbers occur doesn't matter. Because here I can write 2 times 5 that still gives me 10 and I can still write it as 5 times 2. It still gives me 10. The order or the way which I write these prime numbers, the product of prime numbers, doesn't matter. Here as well I can write it as 3 times 5 or I can write it as 5 times 3. So the order in which I write the product of prime numbers do not matter. So this is what is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states. Now there are two ways of prime factorizing or prime factorization. Prime factorization itself means that you are going to express any given composite numbers as a product of prime numbers. The first method is a factor tree and the second method is a repeated division. I am going to use the second method, the repeated division. You can use either of the two methods. Now after this we are going to learn under the fundamental theorem of arithmetic the highest common factor or HCF and then we are going to learn how to find the lowest common multiple LCM of the given numbers. Now to solve this we have to go to the exercise 1.1 and over there I will be explaining you how to find the HCF, LCM and prime factorization using fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now that will be posted in another video. I hope you have understood all the things discussed in this video and if you have any questions please comment below and if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.